Hey guys, I think we're live. Yep, light just came on. I think we're live now. So, uh, hey, I, I've got, uh, I know it looks like I'm not looking at the camera, but I've got my big screen over here, or my, not a big screen, but a TV connected over here where I, you know, I've got the stuff blown up, the chat blown up where I can read it from here. I see uh, Hobby's Woodshop. Matt Peel, Robert Petrie, JJ's Woodshop, Jesse Brown. I uh, hope you're doing well, Jesse. He's down in Louisiana, I believe. He got hit today. Joseph Connor, how you doing, Joseph? Uh, so anyway, so it's going to look like I'm not looking at the camera a lot, but it's because I'm watching the uh, the screen over there. A uh, couple of things I want to talk about. First off, I want to talk about the uh, the hey Mark, how you doing? First thing I want to talk about was the uh, Hurricane Harvey. Um, I don't know uh, if we got any Texans out there in the chat tonight. Um, let's see how many we got. We've only got about 15 so far. Um, I did see Russ Meadows. Uh, he lives in Beaumont, Texas, which got hit pretty hard uh, when Harvey went out and turned around and went back, I think. Uh, I saw him on Facebook. When I did the Facebook Live, so hopefully he's okay. Um, I haven't heard from Charles Deering today. I'm not sure exactly where he lives in Texas, but I know he was kind of in a path of it too. So hopefully, all the guys, uh, guys and gals out there in Texas or in Louisiana now too are, are doing good. So just wanted to mention that. Um, Another thing I want to talk about real quick is I had two or three things and I didn't write them down. I kept thinking, well, it's only a couple of things. I'll remember them. And I'm probably going to forget one. But uh, Charles is fine. I spoke with him yesterday. Yeah, but I don't know what happened between the last 24 hours. I I'm hoping he's okay. Uh, Ryan Ballard, how you doing, Ryan? Uh, yeah, another thing I want to talk about uh, if you follow me on Facebook, and if you don't, I don't know what the heck's wrong with you. Uh, you should be, because that's where I, that's the main social media media I use is Facebook. Uh, so if you want to keep up with what I'm doing, what I got going on, Facebook is really the best way. YouTube's probably second. I used to used to every time I had something going on, I would shoot a quick video, and I just kind of quit doing that. It's just easier to post up on Facebook. Um, so uh, anyway, I want to talk about the uh, the, the meetup. Uh, you know, if you're following me on Facebook, you see that I posted a meetup. My good friend Melinda Davies has offered to. I got a couple of dogs out here with the fight. So, gosh. Um, uh, my good friend Melinda Davies is offered to host an event at her shop. So pretty stoked about that because she's got a nice big shop, lots of room for parking and stuff like that. Uh, so I do need um, I do need a good head cap though. So if you're planning on coming, please let me know some kind of way. Either send me an email, send me a text, uh, do the little thing on the Facebook event. That's probably the best way. I say you're going because I need to get an accurate head cap because I'm going to cater some barbecue. Uh, and you know, we need to know how many folks are coming, uh, for, for that and some other reasons too. But, uh, so if you're going to try to come to that, it's going to be September 30th, which is a Saturday. Uh, it's coming up pretty quick. I'm going to have to whoop the dog here in a minute. Uh, uh, it's coming up pretty quick and, uh, it's, like I said, it's going to be at Melinda's shop. So looking forward to that. Uh, I will have probably that machine right back there. I guess you can see it. Yeah, the 36 by 24. I'll probably have that over there at her shop. And she also has a CNC. It's one of the old uh, metal sidewinders like I have in my shop around back. So good opportunity for people to kind of get some hands on, uh, ask questions, and we can show you right there. Uh, that kind of thing. So hopefully, uh, hopefully you can make that. So 
I did want to talk about, about that as well. Uh, I guess before before we get, <laughs> I got, I'm, I'm dog sitting another dog here, and Rocky doesn't get along with him real good, so uh, it may get a little rowdy here. I try to keep them in here with me so that they don't chew the cat five cord up that I got stretched down the hall. <laughs> so, anyway, we'll get through this. Uh, anyway, tonight we wanted to do uh, some uh, Larry Duggar. How you doing? Jim Senecola. Uh, anyway, we're going to go through some Mach 3 settings. Like, you know, there's a lot of people that are just getting their machines, whether it be a Garage Works or a Gatton CNC. And as far as you know, as far as doing the Mach 3 setup and all that, they're pretty much identical. Um, I always like to build my machines. No matter how I build them, I always build them a certain way. And that way, you can use different machine profiles for different machines. It's not a big deal to set up another machine profile. And I'll probably show you that tonight, too. Uh, I'm going to try to do screenshots. Somebody was telling me that they tried to watch that video and they just couldn't see it clear enough. So I was out here earlier testing, and I believe that I'll be able to do uh, screenshots and actually run this machine or, you know, run Mach 3 um, while I'm on this Hangout without any issue. We'll, we'll give it a shot and see. Uh, so I guess without any further ado, does anybody have any questions before we get started? Again, I'm not trying to ignore y'all. I'm looking over here at the, at the uh, chat. Yeah, Mark Lindsay says, yeah, Melinda shop rules if you're even near day to get to that meetup. Absolutely. And not just that, but, you know, some of you guys, if you're fairly new at, at, at follow me and, and seeing my YouTube stuff, back when we did the CNC with Dave show, I think it was like episode four, uh, we had Melinda on. And uh, she is like the queen of photo V car. So if you need to, you know, pick her brain about photo V car. You definitely want to try to come to that uh, to that meetup. Avi says I'll be there with bells on. Good. Uh, you can leave the bells at home, but you can still come. Um, but yeah, should be a good time. Like I said, I need a head count though because I'm going to came to barbecue, and I'm and you know don't wait till like the day before and say, oh yeah, I'm coming. Uh, let me know at least by a week before. By then, you should know whether you're coming or not. So I can get uh, a number to the caterer, get some barbecue catered out there. And if you come after that, you just probably won't get any barbecue. <laughs> so, but we will have uh, some prizes and stuff. I got a bunch of stuff from FastCap that, uh, that Becca actually got for the Texas meetup. And it was kind of left over. She gave that to me. So we'll use that as uh, giveaways and stuff. And we'll, we'll just have some fun. Uh, and it's not just for CNC folks either. Uh, it's for, you know, woodworkers, makers, whatever you want to call yourself. Uh, but I did want to stress that we're going to have at least a couple of CNCs there uh, where we can uh, show. So if, you're, so if you're kind of on the fence about getting a CNC and you haven't got one yet, um, you know, you're just thinking about it, but you'd like to come test drive one, kind of kick the tires, so to speak, Now's your chance. You can uh, you can come there and, and uh, get questions answered, and uh, I'll let you drive. Yeah. Okay. Becca Miller, how you doing, Becca? All right. So we're going to get started here, I guess. Before I get started doing the. Uh, Love the plaque. Yeah, that's. Uh, I had to take that down, Becca, because I I did the. Uh, and I, I feel rude because I got my back to you here, but I'm I'm looking at different screens. I did the uh, pilot challenge, and I the only good place to to hang that up here in the garage because all the walls here are full of stuff, and I needed to use a uh, 
uh, I was going to put it on a French cleat, and the only good spot was right where I had that plaque. So I took that plaque down, but I'm going to move that plaque, um, I don't know, somewhere. Maybe I'll mount it up there on those doors on the that storage up there or something. I, I still got to bring that Texas thing out here, too. I still haven't done that. So um, any questions? Let's see. Ryan says, I'm still trying to decide if I want to run Mach 3 slash four or a gerbil setup. I don't know. I, I'm not the right, you know, I would ask a lot of questions. I talked to Bill Griggs the other day and he asked me if I had any folks that were using Mach 4. Uh, and I told him, I know of some, I've seen, seen some of them talk about it on the forum. I don't really remember who, the, who it was, I'd have to go look. But uh, anyway, I was telling Bill, I said, well, you know, you know, is it still buggy? And he says, no, it, it's, it's pretty good now, pretty stable. So I can't speak for it one way or the other because I don't use it. I've been using Mach 3 forever. And as long as I got, a, you know, my Mach 3 is running, there's no sense for me to change. Um, I, you know, I use Mach 3 on all these, all these machines. Um, and the other thing, I got an X-Carve, which got the, I don't know if it's the same thing, but I'm not a fan of that either. When I finally do get around to dragging that X-Carve out and doing something with it, I'll probably try to mount a laser on it. Um, I'll uh, probably convert it over to running a, a Xylotex box or something. Anyway, any other questions before we get started? I don't want to drag this on too long. I've already been yakking for... 12 minutes here. Yeah. Make sure, I will say this though, when you, when you, if you're trying to decide between Mach 3 and Mach 4, make sure you read all about the pricing and where you can use it and stuff like that. Because I think Mach 4 is, correct me if I'm wrong guys, but I think it's assigned to one computer and that's it. Whereas Mach 3, uh, you can put it on whatever. Now you're supposed to only run it one at a time, which is, that's pretty much all I do. But um, you can you can move it around a lot easier with with the Mach Three. Of course, it's you know it's older, and sooner or later they'll quit supporting it and stuff like that. But but I tell you that it doesn't really matter whether they support it or not. There's so many folks using it. You can get any question you need answered from from users. So. Anyway, that, like I said, I don't know anything about the, the Gerbil or whatever it was in the Mach 4 because I don't use it. All right, let's do some, uh, let's do some Mach 3 stuff. I was going to go ahead and plug these. First of all, let me say, can y'all hear me good? Because I'm going to be moving around, turning, turning around and everything. I'm, I'm going to try to, that's why I'm, I got the mic right here. That's why, that's why I kind of look in this way too. The camera I got back here just so you can see everything. But if I look at the camera, then I got my back to the microphone. So, okay, Becca says yes. So, yep, loud and clear. Okay, good. Bubba Hogue in the house. Roll tide. Just a few more days. Uh, okay, so let me... Uh, let me show you how I've got this machine set up. This will be probably similar to a lot of the, uh, the ways you guys will be setting up machines. I'm actually going to be running this one off the same laptop as um, that I'm doing this live stream on. So it is a newer laptop, obviously doesn't have the parallel port. So I will be running this. I can get it here. I got wires going everywhere out here. Here you can see, I guess you can see right back here is my Xylotex drive box. I've got the three foot parallel cable um, that they supply with the drive box coming from there. And this drive box is one of the newer ones that has the two parallel port connections. However, for this demonstration, we're not using breakout boards and 
homing switches and all that jazz. We're starting very basic, just showing people how they can, you know, they got their machine put together, they want to see it move. And we're going to have to get your settings straight on that. So here you can see I've got the three-foot parallel cable going to a UC100, which I highly recommend. I tell you, even if you have a computer, an older one with a parallel port, and you can afford one of these, go ahead and get one. Because I that's, that desktop that I run the Gatton on, I first started running it with a parallel port because – uh, Michael Chipser, uh, I don't know if he's out there or not, but he's he found one and made me a good deal on it, so I bought it, and, it, and it's got the parallel connection. But then I thought, well, I've already got this UC100. I might as well use it. So I just started using that, and I, I don't even use the parallel connection. So even if you have a parallel port on your computer, if you can afford one of these, go ahead and get it. They're... I, I just think it runs much smoother. Okay, so let me walk back around here, see if I can trip over a dog or two. Can y'all still see me? I guess so. Let me turn this mic. Maybe I can get it where y'all can see. I haven't disconnected these. I guess I could. I don't have the power on the on the drive box. But anyway, you'll get your drive box, and it'll have... Now, when I say drive box, of course, I'm talking about the Xylotex. If you get something else, it'll be different. But a lot of these settings will still be the same. But you'll have these four cables. They're roughly, I don't know, maybe six feet, five or six feet. But you'll notice as I hold this over here in front, I think you can see this. You'll notice that these are pretty color coded. You got a red, you got a blue, you got a yellow, and you got a green. Now, when you get your kit, it will also you'll also get this paper. In fact, mine's still taped to the box. I never even took it off. I, you know, I've been doing this for so long, I don't even bother reading these things. But this is some stuff from Jeff, uh, as I text saying, read all the document before using the drive box. You have any drive box questions, email, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then he talks about the pin settings and all that stuff. And like I said, I've been doing this so long that a lot of it I got memorized, so I don't even look, look at that or read it. But, okay, so I've got all these unplugged. We've got our four steppers. i got two in the back here on the Y, which that's what you'll have if you have a Gatton or a Garage Works. you got your Z and you got your X. So... All you have to do, and it'll tell you right here on the uh, on this little documentation here, it'll tell you that the red is the X. And these things have these Molex connectors, and we'll talk about those again in a minute. Uh, they're kind of nice in a way because for the newbie, you can't really connect them the wrong way. They only go a certain way. But other than that, well, I can't even get the darn thing in there. Came out of there. What am I not, what am I not doing right? These things kind of pull out as part of the problem. There we go. Oh. There. I wasn't holding my mouth right. Okay, so we put the red one to the X right here. The Z is going to be the green one. Okay, and again, I'm not, this machine doesn't have drag chains or anything like that. I do have them, well, I did have them ordered. They actually came in today. They came on the uh, slow boat from China. But I finally, I finally got them. So that'll be coming up in maybe another live stream or something okay so we've got the green on the z we've got the red on the x the other two is going to be the yellow which is the y-axis and we've got an a blue which technically is the a-axis this is a four axis drive box 
But since we're going to slave these two together, it doesn't matter whether I put the blue on this side or the blue on this side. It makes no difference. Just stick them wherever you want to. So I don't, I don't, I probably don't even do it the same way every time. But I'm going to stick the, uh, I'm going to stick the yellow one right here on this side. And I'll put this blue one, which is the A axis, over here on the other side. Okay, so we got yellow, blue, green, and red. Any questions? 36 watching, please take a set and hit the like button. Yeah, if you want to. Or hit the thumbs down, I don't care. Either, either one. You know, it was funny because I did that first live stream, and I, I don't know how many times I said it, you know, during the thing. It's going to be a really boring video. It's going to be long because I'm putting this whole machine together from scratch till finish. And I still got 10 thumbs down. I'm like, I told you. So anyway, okay, so we've got, got all our connections made. So now we're ready to set up our Mach 3. And now I'm going to try this. I hope it will work. I'll still be able to see the questions because I got that set up on another um, laptop so I can still see the questions. But I'm going to go into screen sharing now. And well, let me see if I can, uh, before I get it, let me go ahead and get it open here. Uh, no, I'll screen share first just so y'all can see how I do that. Can y'all still hear me? I keep turning that mic the other way. Okay, can y'all see that, somebody? I'm hoping you can see this. Okay. Can y'all see my screen? Somebody please let me know here. You see my desktop. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, okay. Now what I'm going to do is I've already got, if you can see my screen, you see I've already got a whole bunch of different uh, machine profiles here. But I'm going to go to the Mach 3 mill. Well, first I'm just going to act like those other ones aren't there. And I'm going to highlight the Mach 3 mill, and then I'm going to click Create Profile. And you, if, in your case, you know, if you've only got one machine, and you could edit the Mach 3 mill profile, and that would work. But I would advise to make yourself a profile just for your machine. So I'm going to highlight the Mach 3 profile. Then I'm going to click Create Profile. And then I'm going to come down here and clone from, which means it's going to copy the settings from this one, whichever one I select. And then I'm going to call it a new profile name. And I'm going to call this one GW, GW for GarageWorks 24 by 18, which is this small machine. Okay, and so when I hit OK, it now puts a GW24 by 18 right there. So now I'm going to tell it to open that profile. And it's probably going to have some default settings because it cloned from the, uh, <laughs> the Mach 3 mil settings. Okay, now you see it's pop, it pops this up, and I could check this to have it not ask me this again, but I leave it where it always pops up because I use different ones. So it's saying it detected uh, a plug-in at UC100, which I showed you that a while ago. Uh, so I'm going to click OK. And then I should be able to hit Reset. Oh, I bet it's got that uh, stupid e-stop thing. This is something that always drives new people nuts, too. 
come to the input signals you use that default thing and they always have this if you just put zeros in there and un, un, or disable it then it sh then you shouldn't have that problem anymore see now i can now i can turn that reset off and it doesn't affect me but yeah it's always a pain in the butt when you're first starting because right off the bat you've got to got to know what to do there so you just have to um you know i don't know why they have that as default you'd think they would have it where you would add that later but they don't but anyway so again if you get that where you can't turn that e-stop off or can't reset the reset button go to ports and pins input signals scroll down to where the e-stop is and see what this is why i put zeros because it, somehow it always keeps putting that enabled back in there so but if you have port zero pin zero then it kind of disables it that way so you can turn it off so now you can hit it and it will go off okay now let's go set some settings first off we we need to decide are we going to work with um inches or metric so i usually try to come straight down this list you say select native units and it'll say don't change this between metric and english code this is for setting units used for motor tuning yes we know that and at least by default here it's set for inches so i'm going to say okay because that's what i want to work in if you want to work in metric you would select metric and then hit okay okay the next one down is again we'll come to this ports and pins we'll come over here to uh, the motor outputs and you see these are kind of all screwed up too you know they put some default numbers in there but this isn't what works with Mach 3 um, we have the x-axis should be 2 but this this should be 3 and it's kind of it's really easy to remember this because it's basically just well I'm pointing at the screen like y'all can see but it's basically 2 3 4 5 6 seven and then a is eight and then nine so it's two three four five six seven eight nine okay and also we have to enable the a axis even though we're not technically running an a axis we're slaving that to the y axis so we need to turn that one on so because we've got four stepper motors so that's pretty much all we need to do over there we need to make sure that these all say step port one direction port one for the four uh axis here that would be correct okay and now we can hit apply and we can move over to input signals okay and again, we don't have anything going on here because we don't have any limit switches. We don't have an e-stop. We don't have nothing. We just want to play with our machine. We just got it built. Want to learn some stuff before we start adding all those little bells and whistles. So are y'all just really being quiet and listening or because I haven't seen <laughs> I haven't seen the chat move in a little bit. So I'm assuming y'all are still with me and I'm not just talking to myself. Um, let me make sure that somebody say something in the chat there. So I know, so I know it's, I'm still, uh, still working. Okay. Listening and learning. Okay. I, well, that's good. I, I just, if you're being quiet, that's fine. I just want to make sure that I wasn't standing there talking to myself. Okay. So we don't really need anything there. Output signals. We don't really need anything there. We really don't need much of anything else in this particular window ports and pins We're pretty pretty good there Okay, so we can hit okay there And again, well, we, we can leave that I don't think that matters Whether we select that or not. Okay, so now I'm going to come down to motor tuning 
And again, here's all these default values that I talk about. Uh, they put a, a default value of steps per of 2,000. Mark Lindsay, well, you are standing there talking to yourself. No, I got an audience of two dogs in here, so. <laughs> okay. So I always tell people, and I've got screenshots on both my websites. I thank both of them. I know I got them on the, the Gatton CNC website or the DaveGatton.com website. But if you go to that, that website and look up Mach 3 settings, you'll see that because of the step that I spec out to build these machines or with that, what comes with a, a garage works. If you buy a and B from me, you get the five start lead screws, uh, and with the stepper motors that these come with this number. And again, I'm going to put in just a kind of a whole number here to get you close. You can still run the calibration and we'll deal with that in another, um, another thing, but you know, 6,400 will get you pretty dang close without even running the calibration. Okay. The X axis again, you could, you could leave this at 120 if you wanted to. Uh, if you want, you know, especially if you're brand new and you wanted to just make sure you didn't, you know, you didn't want to get it to, you're kind of like a car. You didn't want to, you know, didn't want to get it all the way in fourth gear yet, just yet. So you could leave that at 120, but I always put 200. And usually when I hit this, Well, it hadn't changed yet, but I bet when I hit OK, it'll, it'll change to slightly under that. It'll say 199.98, I believe is what it is. OK, acceleration, I'm going to leave that at 4 for right now. That's And it would be 4 inches per second. I'll leave it set at that. Uh, the step pulse, I'm trying to remember what I have on those screenshots. I believe it's 5, but you can... You can do some different different things here and it will work. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna go with five for now and we'll test that in a little bit and see what it was. Okay. So notice that this is just the x-axis motor. We're only working on the that one stepper motor right now. So what we need to do is before we go over here and move on to the Y, we have to make sure that we click this save axis settings, because if we hit this first, before we save them, you haven't done anything. When you come back to it, it'll be right back to 2000 right there in the steps per 120 in the velocity and all that. So always make sure you hit save axis settings and notice how that's grayed out now. Then you can come to the y-axis and see now if I go back and hit x-axis, I can see that that did take. And now you notice that it says 199.98. I'm not sure why that changes. For some reason, 200, it just doesn't like, it always drops it down to that. But anyway, okay, so now we'll go back to the y-axis and it's basically the same thing as what the x-axis was. So again, I'm gonna set the steps per at 6,400. And if anybody wants to know all the details about how I come up with that number, we'll get into that another time. It's a bunch of math uh, formulas and all that stuff. But trust me, 6,400 works for a uh, half inch, 10 thread, five star lead screw. Uh, okay, so I'm going to come back over here. The Y, I'm also going to set to 200. And again, if this seems a little fast for what you want to start out out, you don't have to, you don't have to go that fast. You could leave it at 120. Uh, it'll run fine at that. Okay. So now I've got my Y axis set and I'm going to make sure I save that before I move on. And again, I could go back to the X, make sure it's right. The Y axis will now say 199.98 in there like the other one. And now we'll go to our Z axis. Okay, now the Z-axis, the steps per unit is going to be the same because it's using the same five-start lead screw, 
as all of them are. So I'm going to put 6,400 in there. Okay. But obviously the Z axis, you know, it doesn't have that much travel. So it doesn't really need to go 200 inches a minute. It'll never reach it anyway. I usually leave it at 120. You could even put it, you know, a lot less than that. You could put it at probably at 60 and you'd be good uh, because it's just never going to move that fast because you run out of room before you, you know, before you get there. So I'm going to leave all that. That's at four. We got five and five. So I'm going to save the axis setting for there. So now I can come back and check. There's my X. That's what I want. There's my Y. There's my Z. And notice if I click on this A, it's still got the default values in there. You can put numbers in there if you want to, but it doesn't make any difference because it's not really reading those numbers because it's slave to the Y. It's reading the Y axis numbers. So it's really reading these. So I'm just going to leave those alone. Like I said, you can put something in there and match it up 6,400 and 200, make it just like the Y if you want, but it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't do a thing. If you slave that axis, which we're, we're getting ready to do here. So I'm going to hit OK there. Come back over here again. We've done the motor tuning. Uh, I'm going to skip some of these and I'm going to go down here to that slave axis since we were just talking about that. And I want to come to this middle column and I want to go to where it says Y axis and I want to say slaved axis, slave the A axis. So now those two will work in sync. And also you'll notice it says restart Mach 3 after resetting these selections. So I'm going to hit, and again, it, keep, it keeps bugging you, reminding you, restart program for slaving changes to take effect. So just so I don't forget, I'm going to go ahead and we'll, uh, we'll go to config. We'll come down here to save settings. We'll save what we've done so far. And then we'll exit out of this. And then I'll open it back up and that way the slave will be in effect. Come back to my, uh, that's called Mach 3 loader. I might have clicked on it too fast. I, I guess you guys can see it. But it basically, it loads up your different profiles. So I'm going to come back to that GW 24 by 18, which is the one I created. Somebody let me know over there in the chat. You know, I know some of these little boxes on this Mach 3 screen are pretty uh, pretty small. Is everybody seeing everything okay? Oh, no, wait, it'd probably take a minute for y'all to, to get it. Okay, I'm gonna keep going and assuming y'all can see everything okay. Okay, so we're going to come back to the config. The homing slash limits, I'm going to open this up just so we can look at it. And you'll notice that it has just default settings in there. I've got one session on my TV and I can see it fine. Okay. All right, I just want to make sure everybody can see because I know some of these, even when you open up these little pop-up windows, some of it's pretty small. But I figure with uh, screen sharing, it should be really clear instead of trying to put a webcam on it. So, <laughs> okay. So I'm going to come back to this because I'm I'm, I'm going to I want to go back and switch, take it off of screen share where you can see what happens when you do the the uh, the checking there. I'm sure we're going to have to check some of these right here to reverse the motors because there's going to be some things going uh, backwards. So we're going to come back to that screen. Um, I don't believe there's anything in general config that needs to be. I usually uncheck this, but I found out the other day, I think it doesn't really matter. This says A axis is angular. And I'm running it as linear, so I unchecked that. But again, I, ha I found out I, ha I had it on a different profile, and I didn't. I still had it checked, and it was working fine. So I guess as long as you have the Y 
and the A slave together, a lot of the things about the A axis doesn't matter. Uh, if you're starting Mach 3 for the first time, I'll show you this in here. Uh, there's a spot down here that says auto screen enlarge. And if you've got a high resolution screen, you can check that. A lot of people will, when they first do Mach 3, it's only like showing on about three fourths of their screen. And you can select these right here, especially the auto screen enlarge. And like I said, if you've got a high resolution screen, check that. And then when you leave Mach 3 and come back, it will fill up your screen like mine is now. Okay. I don't think there's anything else on this particular page we need to be concerned with just yet. Uh, like I said, folks, this Mach 3 has a lot of bells and whistles. And for the basic machine setup, you don't use probably 90% of it. Okay. So we're going to come down here. Uh, system hotkeys. This is where you set up your uh, which button you want things to move. So here's how I do it. And I think it's pretty much how everybody should do it. The X plus, does everybody know what Cartesian coordinates are? They understand X to the right is in a positive direction. X to the left is in the negative direction. So what you want to do is if you put X plus, or I guess you got to hit, yeah, you got to hit this little thing and it'll say press any key. So if I press my right arrow key, it comes up with the number 39. These probably aren't going to change because they're already set. Uh, if I hit X minus and I hit the left key, it's going to come up with 37. The Y positive is going to be the up arrow key, which will move the machine towards the from the front to the back. That'll be 38. The Y minus key, which is going to move the machine from the back to the front, which will be the down arrow. That's 40. And then the Z plus is um, page up which is 33 and then page down will bring the Z axis down. That'll be page down. And of course they obviously didn't change because this, this uh, thing already had them in there. And for right now, that's all we need on that. Okay. I think we're just about done here other than going and setting. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't want to change anything on homing limits because I want to show you what happens if you forget to do that. Uh, everything else, I think we're pretty good. So I'm going to click save settings again, and we're ready to fire this up. Thank uh, fired up for the first time. Now, how are we doing on time here? 843. Yeah, we'll, we'll get going here. All right. So I'm going to stop sharing the screen for just a second. And that way you can see the actual machine. Michael chips are in the house. How you doing, Michael? Okay, everybody should be able to see see the machine now, correct? All right, so I also want to point it out too is when I've started Mach 3, and I hope you all can see this, I think, yeah, I think you can. There's two lights on either side of this UC100. One's a green LED right over here. I'm covering it up with my finger. When you plug that in, that just shows that the UC100 is getting power. And when, you remember when I did the Mach 3 screen and it came up and it asked me about the UC100 and I said, yep, I'm using this one. After I, I did that, it connects and you'll get this blue LED. So that shows you right there. You want to make sure you've got your green LED and your blue LED both, both lit up for that to work. Okay, so we're ready to turn the box on now. And I'm going to have to have Mach 3 screen up, so I won't be able to see myself. So I'm going to turn the uh, drive box on. And you'll hear it power up. 
Okay. So the first thing you want to do after you power this up and you got, you know, you got everything set, you put your settings in. The only thing you don't know for sure is when you go to press buttons, if things are going to be moving in the right direction, because I didn't set any of those reverse things on the homing, uh, what is the homing limit, whatever that is, homing slash limits, I think what, what they call it. So what you want to do is if I push the page down button, the Z axis should move down. But I want to be careful. I don't want to just mash the button and hold it and then find out it's going along the way. So I want to just kind of bump that button. Okay, so I'm, I'm bumping the page down button and the Z axis is moving the right way. So now if I go to page up, it's going the correct way. So we know the Z axis is correct. So now I need to check the X axis. And again, if I push, push the right arrow key, this carriage should move that way. If it moves that way, I know that it's going the wrong direction. So I'm going to push the right arrow key. Ah, oh, yeah, look what we got here. So we know that that one is backwards. So we can go to that. And I, I can go screen share again if, if anybody has any question on this. But I'm going to go to that homing limit screen again. And where it had that red X in the reversed column for the X axis, I'm going to change that to a green check. Click OK. And now, well... Now when I push the right arrow key, it moves the correct way. Okay, so we've got the X moving in the right direction. We've got the Z axis moving in the right direction, going up and down like it's supposed to. But now comes the tricky one. And the only reason this one's a little tricky is because you've got two motors running that Y axis. And if they're both going the right way, that's great. If they're both backwards, that's okay. But if you got one of them backwards and one of them running the correct way, it's going to put a, a rack on that gantry in a heartbeat. So what you want to do is, again, hit these buttons really slow, just kind of bump them and watch to see. And again, if you recall, I put the yellow on this side. So this is the y-axis, and I put the blue one on this side. So that's really the a-axis as far as my free is concerned. So I'm going to bring my, since the machine is kind of back that way, I'm going to bump the down arrow, which should, if everything's working right, should bring it towards the front of the machine. <laughs> Okay, and it looks like both of those, fortunately, they're both moving the same way, but they're both moving the wrong way. Because they're moving back, and it should move forward. So if I press the up arrow, which should move it back, it's moving it forward. So that's okay. But we need to switch both the y-axis and a-axis in Mach 3 using that homing um, homing slash limits page and we need to put a green check in place of the red x on the y and we're going to also do it on the a but i'm going to put one on the y and leave the a going backwards just for a sec because this is what I'm talking about, folks. It's really critical. It's not that big a deal on the X and the Z because, I mean, you still don't want to just mash the button and have it run and tear up something when it's going the other way that you think it's going to go. But on the Y axis, it's really important that you not wrap that, that gantry. So if I now push the down arrow key, 
and just bump it, you can see real quick that that one, the A axis is moving back instead of forward. This one's moving the right way. So you see, it's already starting to put a twist. So if I just hit back like that a little bit, you can either measure or if you if you have garage works or a steel frame machine, you can bring it all the way up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to that homing limits again, and I'm going to change the A axis. So I ended up having to reverse the X, the Y, and the A. The Z was the only one that was uh, was correct. At all this. So I can hit OK. And now, whoops, I'm going to reset it here. Now, what I probably want to do is bring it all the way up to the front. Just kind of bumping it up here to the front. And again, this thing, for those of you who don't know, this is on a little old plastic cart. So if you see this thing shaking, it's not the machine, it's the whole what it's setting on shaking. So I'm just going to bring this up to where it touches. And then once I see that they're both touching and the gantry's back square again, now I can just hit the up arrow and send it back. So it's really not that hard to get one of these set up to start with. But you do want to be a little cautious about, you know, that racking deal. You don't want to, uh, you know, that'll make for a bad day if, if you rack that thing up. You don't want to start off. You got a brand new machine. You just got it built. And you don't want to start off first thing you do, you rack the heck out of the, the gantry. That's, that's not a good thing. Okay. Anybody got any questions? I see Lance says, can I cover the backlight settings? Lance, I will, but we're already close to an hour in this. Um, and I'm trying to, I'm trying my best to keep these in an hour because, you know, you're watching live, but, you know, Joe Blow comes up tomorrow and wants to watch it. They don't want, they don't want to upset and watch a really long video. And I will be putting, you know, maybe some index stuff on there like I did the first two. Somebody was saying that, that made it a little better. But uh, anybody have any questions about what I just showed as far as getting the initial set up uh, and how to reverse? Uh, like I said, I, I can go screen share again and show somebody what I did. In, in fact, let, I, let me do that real quick just so there's no question. Uh, let me go screen share real quick. Yeah, Lance, make sure you're, uh, well, make sure you subscribe to me and got the notification thing. And also follow me on Facebook if you're not already. Uh, oh, this stupid thing always in the way. Okay, here's my Mach 3. Now, what I did a while ago, folks, just to be clear, I came down to this homing limits. And remember when I first showed you this, um, all of these had just red X's. That's what's default. And I ended up having to reverse the X because it was running backwards. Uh, the Y and the A were both running backwards. So I checked those. The Z was the only one that was still running the correct way. So I left it there. And that's all you have to do. Now, one thing I will mention, and I don't, I hope I don't confuse folks by mentioning this, but I remember one time in the forum, somebody was saying um, that they had a, a machine running backwards and somebody says, well, just go to your, uh, let's see, where is it? Yeah, yeah, just go to your motor outputs and change this right here, you know, to, and that will reverse it. And I, and I had to get on there quick and say, yeah, that'll reverse it, but that's not how you reverse the machine. That's that you're changing whether it's low active or high active, you know, the, the right way to do it is over here, which makes perfect sense whether it's reversed or not. So 
it's either you know it's either running right or it's running backwards so you just make this whatever it needs to be to get it to run the right way according to your arrows so that's how you change change the direction anybody got any other questions y'all been a quiet group tonight haven't had a whole lot of questions unless i missed them I don't see anything. Um, well, let me get off of this issue. Okay, I've also had, you know, I wanted to do this, uh, this Mach 3 thing. And while we got just a few minutes left, I think, no, I haven't done this yet, have I? Oh, there we go. While well, we got just a few minutes left before we get out of here, I just want to tell folks, you know, if you're brand new at the CNC thing, it's not it's not hard. I mean, it's not rocket science, obviously, or I couldn't do it. But please, please, just get your machine built, get the basic settings in, Get a little familiar with it before you start trying to do all that other stuff. Homing switches, touch plates. I mean, you know, have some fun with your machine and learn a little bit and then move on to add the other stuff. I see so many people get just totally frustrated because they try to do all the bells and whistles all at once and they've never run a CNC machine before in their life. So it's, you saw how simple it was. It's, it's not that many settings to get it up and running. It takes just, you know, a few minutes. So get your machine up and running. Get it jogging the correct way. Dry run it some, you know, to, uh, to test it out. And when I, by dry running it, uh, let me turn it back on. And I think I still got this. You know, let me just load something here. Make sure he's not chewing up some. Okay, what I mean by uh, I don't remember where that. You got a recent file. Well, nuts. Oh, I know why. It's because I was in the. All right, I'll find it. I'm just going to load a, a file here, find something to. To test this with. I have programs I've had in here for a long time and I don't even like this company so I don't, I'm not going to mention their name but it's a great program to run I don't know where I got it I've had it forever and I used to use this as a demo well where'd it go I must have done something wrong Oh, I know what it was. I tried to load the CRV instead of the text. That won't work. All right, it must be in this other directory. My biggest problem is I can't remember where I had stuff. All right, let's see. Oh, I know. I think it was another the directory. Wow, I'm going to use up all the time trying to find this stupid program. All right, it's right up here. I was in the right place to start with. Didn't have it set right. Okay, this is what I was trying to find. There we go. 
Okay, so what I mean by dry run, and I'm sure most of you people that have done this before, you know. Uh, you know, you might even have a router on here, but what I mean is to set your zero so that your bed, if you do have a router on here, is well above the material. You know, make it like where you're an inch and a half or so from getting the material. Then you can load in a program, hit reference all home. Well, if you hit the reset button, you can. Okay, and then you can just cycle start this. And it will sit here in what I call a dry run. It's not cutting anything. Some people call it cutting air. Uh, I probably should have set to zero a little closer to the front. Yeah, maybe okay. But anyway, you can just you can just do do that and I would recommend doing that if you're brand new before you ever put a piece of material, you know. Like I said, folks, this isn't hard, it's not rocket science, but you don't want to start out putting a piece of expensive material on here, your first thing, you know, cut scrap, cut MDF, uh, you know, cut a lot of air. If you're if you're brand new at this. And you, uh, you know, like I said, you're brand new to programming as well. Make sure you, uh, you know, set it up just like you would. You can put your material on here and put your little, you know, X marks the spot or however you're going to reference it. And then make sure, just, just leave your Z up high and cut above it or just run it above it. Make sure it's moving where you think it's going to be. Um, just, I just see too many folks get get all fired up and try to do too much too early. Like I said, it's not hard, but keep it simple. That's my advice for tonight. Keep it simple. Okay, well, I don't see any other questions. Jim Senecola, I couldn't get my slave YNA to move without racking. Had to back off to 150. Or well, you probably had something in a bind. Remember when I first built, if you guys watched this, uh, the first thing I did, you know, I built it and then we were like four hours into it. When I first started moving it, jogging it around, this side over here wanted to hang a little bit. This, this side over here. And I came out the next morning and fired it up and went jogging around. I couldn't get it, I couldn't get it to do it. It wouldn't hang up anymore. But I took some uh white lithium grease and put on those two and, and then i got to looking closer and there's actually some rust on this one back here because when i build these demo machines for me especially this one that uses real short acme uh rod i instead of buying some i'll try to use up some of my drop and that's what i've done and when i'm using my drop it's not all wrapped up in a little plastic greasy sleeve like they come from master so it was out for years and uh, had a little rust on it. But you can see I, I put just a little dab of that white lithium grease on there and this thing runs like a champ now. So probably uh, might can try that jam or make sure that everything is lined up correctly. Because you should, you should be able to get 200 inches a minute out of that if you got the 425 ounce motor. All right, I think we're probably past. Yeah, 904. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna get out of here tonight. Uh, thank y'all. We got 37 watching right now. Thank y'all, Mark Lindsay, Jim Sinicola, Robert Petrie. Um, who else was on our Lance and Bubba, Michael Chipser, Becca. Thank y'all for tuning in to watch. Uh, like I said, tomorrow I'll have this, as this thing becomes a video after I close it out tonight, I'll go up and put some little index things. So if you want to see something special, Michael Chipster, how you doing, Michael? Hobby, yeah, Hobby was on there. Uh, Ryan Ballard. Uh, and I, as long as I can still get questions, Kevin Calhoun, how you doing, buddy? Didn't see you on there earlier. 
I have, you know, I had some questions. Let me see if I can get to it here. Yeah. One of the biggest problems with having a lot of CNCs is whichever one you're not using, it's going to be covered up. With stuff. All right, I've had a lot of questions because when I first built this machine the first time, not for the second time on the live stream, I uh, had this laser on it, and I was playing around with the laser. I did a video or two or a Facebook video or two with it. And I've had some folks ask me about my laser settings. Uh, so that's I'd like to do one of these uh, live streams uh, about the laser settings, but I wasn't going to try to do it with with everything else. It'll be pretty much a show by itself. Uh, but anyway, uh, I do use a breakout board for this. And anyway, I'm not going to go into it now, but if anybody wants to see that, I'll probably do that one maybe next or unless somebody, unless I get a bunch more questions about something else in between now and when I do the next one. Uh, but I don't mind doing these. As long as I can keep them short. Uh, okay, Jim Salicola says yes to laser settings. I know I've had two or three people. Becca, you probably got, I know Becca, I think, has got this exact same laser. 2.8 JTAC Photonics laser. I'm getting a bunch of yeses. Okay, so I guess next Wednesday then, uh, unless something comes up, plan on... Uh, um, we're talking about the, the laser uh, and the settings I use. And we can actually burn something here live because it's not that loud. It's kind of hard to run a router on something like this because it's so dang loud. That's why I didn't even bother putting, putting one on here. All right, that's it. I'm going to shut this thing down. Uh, again, i got 38 viewers watching. I appreciate you. Uh, everybody keep Texas and Louisiana folks in the prayers. And I guess that's it. We'll see y'all next time. Everybody take care. Have a good one.